Hey, I'm Dustin Higgins from DHBScripting.com. So I took a few days to teach myself all about the Windows Presentation Framework in PowerShell. Bottom line up front, if that's not a tool that you have in your PowerShell toolbox, take the time to learn it. It's incredible how fast you can build insanely productive user interfaces that look good to solve real problems. So, I mean, it's great to have the command line tools when you're looking at thousands of machines, but there might be a time where you want to look at one machine or you want to build tools that other people will use. The Windows Presentation Framework is, is great for that. So um, I had a workflow that was uh, fairly straightforward. It was geared towards system administration. You know, basically click button, grab data, put data in data grid, export to Excel. Um, so what I'm going to do is walk through the steps that I went through to, to learn about the different controls, the XML file that goes with the Windows Presentation Framework, and the code that I needed to put in my PowerShell script. Uh, it was, you know, looking back on the whole thing, it's like you know, the, the thing I was able to build at work it literally has 20 buttons on it to do everything from checking this space to, to collecting information about remote desktop licenses. I mean, it's insane how easy it is to, to build something that, that's highly productive. So I'm gonna walk you through those steps. The first thing I did was build a window. There's many posts that demonstrate how to do that. Pretty much all you need to do is add the presentation framework assembly type, create the XML for the application, load it, and then show the window. Here's what my boring window looks like. I like to keep the XML in a separate file to simplify the PowerShell code. After experimenting with the controls, it really seemed like the grid was going to help me lay the application out. I set show grid lines equal to true to help me visualize what the application was going to look like. Here's the XML for the grid controls. Um, I also put borders around those. I, yeah, I kind of have a thing for borders. Um, yeah, I think it helps with the overall presentation. But um, that XML actually went in in between the window tags. And you can see where I have the, the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row. The top row has a nested uh, grid for the buttons that has like three columns. And the bottom row has a nested grid that has two columns. My application was going to have three rows. The first row was going to hold a, a set of buttons. The data grid was going to go in a second row. And the third row actually has a nested grid, one to hold a pretty picture and the other one to hold a rich text box that I was going to log entries into. Now it's time to add the controls. In the first row, I used stack panels to hold the buttons along in the last column with the yeah, stack panel to hold the label and the text box that's going to hold the computer name. The second row simply holds the data grid. In the third row, I added a rich text box that I could log to. Um, I figured out the flow document. I also added a uh, pretty picture. Here is what my application looked like so far. I really wanted my application to pop, so I worked on some formatting next. Since my application wasn't complicated, I figured out I could use the style tag under Windows Resources to apply a style to all controls of the same type. That really simplified the XML file. Here's the formatting I did for the border. One simple tag formatted all the borders. For the button formatting, I used a linear gradient brush only because I thought it was neat. So I added a bunch of different offsets so I really understood what the, the gradient brush did to the control. The XML for the button format does some basic formatting like the font. It also uses the gradient brush and um, yet through a style resource that sets the, the rounded corners for the button. With the buttons formatted, it's really starting to look like something now. For the data grid, I set a handful of properties. I made it read only. I set the selection mode and unit. I made it so the user can't reorder or resize the columns. I also set some colors for the rows. I also set the font for the data grid row and the column headers. I set some basic properties for the label. For the text box, I set the width, 
some colors, the margin, and the font. Since I'm only going to use the rich text box for logging, I set it to read only and I turned on the vertical scroll bars. Alright, the application's looking a lot better at this point. It's time to make it actually do something. To access the controls from PowerShell, you have to name them. Here's an example of all the name controls that I'm using. There's a really neat command you can use in PowerShell to find all the name controls in XML to set variables for them so you can access them. For this simple example, I added two button clicks, one for a query in disk space and the other one to export the data grid to Excel. Both button clicks log to the rich text box. Having a logging function in box is useful for debugging issues while developing the application. It's also a good way to provide feedback to the application user. I also created the function to read the name from the computer text box. If it's empty, it gets defaulted to the local computer. The getDiskSpace function does all the work to get the disk space. The key to this function is returning an object that will be displayed in the data grid. Load data grid clears the items in the data grid and adds the objects that are passed to it. I created columns for all the object properties programmatically so it didn't have to be defined in the XML file. Using a data table is another great way to load data into a data grid. To utilize that method, I would just create a function to convert PowerShell objects to a data table, then set the item source property in the data grid. The one-click export data grid to Excel button is a really nice feature to have. I just used the com object for Excel and added the info from the data grid. At this point, I realized my PowerShell window kept crashing. A simple Google search pointed me to this code to display the window and make the crash go away. The end result is a productive, professional-looking application that goes together really fast. Relatively speaking, it does not require that much code. It can easily be modified to have different styles and colors. I was able to fill my application with 20-plus buttons in about a day's time. They did everything from checking disk space to displaying hard to access license data. Of course, I already had the functions built, but it was pretty easy to put into the user interface. If at this point I inspired anybody at all to learn about the Windows presentation framework, I kind of feel like I did my job. Yeah, you know, for me, all I did, I, I just started using it. I didn't use Visual Studio. I just started with the, the XML file and yeah, you know, started with a window and went from there and learned how the controls worked. And I, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to provide any feedback and don't forget to like the video.